So here is the latest iteration of my um, six input hot end. So here it is next to a five colour diamond. So as you can see it's a bit narrower um, but quite a bit longer. Probably worth talking a little bit about the diamond because this is um, this is what I'm trying to improve upon. So the main problem of course with a, um, a diamond hot end is that it doesn't actually mix. Um, filaments come in through the heat breaks here, through the heat sinks, uh, and go into this cone, and um, they just get combined together. So what comes out of the nozzle is uh, akin to stripy toothpaste, which is the main thing I'm trying to fix. The other issues with this is that um, it uses these E3D um, V6 light style heat breaks, which are PTFE lined. But in order to get five of them around in a, in a circle like that, these lower fins have been reduced in diameter, which makes them a lot less efficient. And so you get heat creep. It's especially a problem with a mixing hot end because you get the situation where only some of the filaments are moving forward and the others can be static. So for example, if you're trying to print green and you're mixing blue and yellow, uh, then the other filaments aren't necessarily moving forward. The five colour diamond is what much worse than the three colour and it's because these fins have been reduced in my opinion. Um, so to fix it I redesigned the, uh, the shroud, the fan shroud thingy, all this part here, in order to fix a bigger fan. So by default it comes with a 40mm fan that sits down here somewhere. Um, I had to use a 60mm fan to get the airflow up to cool the heat brakes efficiently. So that kind of cured the heat creep issue, but we still have the basic problems in that um, it doesn't actually mix and that's the nozzle. So if you want to change to a different size nozzle, um, you've got to change that part, which means taking this whole assembly apart, undoing these heat brakes, um, swapping a new brass bit on, putting it back, it takes hours to do. So that's the starting point and that's what we're trying to improve upon um, what I've been doing for the last couple of years. So this then is the latest iteration. Um, we'll start at the top. So this is, uh, this is liquid cooled. Um, so this is the cooler block, this section on top. Coolant in, coolant out. Um, and then the six inputs which go through to six heat breaks. Uh, so here are some pictures of just the cooler block. And this shows the six heat breaks. So this is a complete assembly. Um, basically this is how it mounts is this rod here. There are spring loaded plungers that go in either side of that. So it's fixed that way. So it can't move in X or Y but it can pivot about that point in the Z direction. So what happens is when the bed when the bed comes up, touches the nozzle, it causes causes the hot end to lift slightly. And then this brass bolt goes against a brass plate. So it's the physical stop on where the hot end sits. There are lugs on here I can attach springs to as well. Um, so that's the physical stop, but it's also the electrical contact. So this forms one half of a switch. The plate on which it goes forms the other half. So as soon as that starts to move, it breaks the contact. And that's what um, that's the Z homing position, if you see. 
I mean, so I don't use a separate probe. The, no the, hot the nozzle itself is the probe. So I'll say six inputs, six heat breaks. Um, and then this block from here to here is a combining block. At least that's the word I call it. Here are some more pictures of that. It's a difficult thing to make. So essentially five of the inputs um, are drilled at compound angles to end up at a central point. And the sixth input is straight down. So five filaments go through the mixing chamber and the sixth filament bypasses the mixing chamber. It runs straight down here um, until around about this position when it's at a slight angle and it joins up again with the six that have come through the mixing chamber, the other five that have come through the mixing chamber. And then comes out the nozzle, the nozzle will screw onto that in there. So the rationale behind that is that the the actual mixing chamber and the mechanism is quite complicated, quite, quite a complex path and um, I have this feeling or previous tests kind of shown that retracting the filaments at the inlet to the chamber don't necessarily reduce result in a reduction of pressure at the nozzle tip so this sixth filament which will be clear um, is a straight path pretty well straight to the nozzle tip and the idea being that will act as a plunger it's color neutral because it, it's clear um, so I can set sort of 10% um, clear along with the other colors so for example um, or, or some other percentage it doesn't really matter 1% would probably do and then I'm retracting it, it gets retracted by the same amount as the other filaments and will release the pressure um, I've asked for and will probably hopefully get sometime in the future a change to the firmware which will um, allow me to use a different retract amount for each of the uh, for each individual drive rather than for um, a complete tool so it could well be that um, I only need to retract that one filament and not all of them together or maybe I just need to retract the others a little bit um, I really don't know until we until it's a chicken and egg thing until the firmware allows me to do it I can't test it um, uh, so the heater is uh, sits in a hole which goes all the way down there it's um it's an e3d super volcano heater 48 mil long and the thermistor there's a cartridge which goes in a hole there which is drilled at a slight angle and goes through this block and touches on the lower block there which is the, the nozzle block as does the heater it just touches on that block Um, so that hole in the side goes through at an angle through this, through the mixing chamber block, and through the um, this other block that kind of forms the filament back up back into a, a, a circular 1.8 mil path before it then goes into the nozzle. So there's nothing to retain; they're just held in with some uh, boron nitride paste. Um, so it can't fall out. Um, I'll just cable tie that somewhere. Um, and it doesn't need a, uh, a retaining screw or anything to hold the cartridge in, which could otherwise damage it. I don't like doing that. And same with the hot end, it can't, uh, the heater, it can't come out the bottom, obviously, because there's no hole and it can't slide out the top. So the combining block took me, uh, this, this block, took me three days to make that, because um, I had three attempts. <laughs> um, you're trying to drill holes at a compound angle 
um, into essentially a flat plate um, and have them all enter, uh, exit that plate at the same point and they're all sort of different like that and they're only 1.8mm diameter so it's quite easy to break a drill as well. So this is my final attempt at making a passive mixing hot end. By passive I mean one which will mix without using an external driven stirrer or paddle of some sort. I posted the first part of this journey on my blog back in February 2020 so it's taken me about 18 months to get this far. Somehow it feels longer. These are some of the uh, prototype parts that I've made along the way. So at the time of recording I have now tested this hot end and um, in the next video I will reveal details of the latest mixing mechanism and say if it works or whether I concede defeat. Until next time.